Okay, touch the bloody centre then too. This is at 18 mil now, or should be. close enough that's got to have two flats put on there the tank and then I'll do that next actually and then I just got to chamfer this edge put in the mill put the tang on it then I can put it in the sleeve in the headstock and do the features on this end well this end of the job is done by the two flats what I might do is take it out of the chuck, spin it around, put it in that adapter turn all this down to the same dimension so I can hold it in some V-blocks in the vise on the mill to put the flats on then I can yeah, then move on to doing this end here I think that's what I'll end up doing I think that's possibly tomorrow now I got the better of me before I went inside I flipped it around and I just took this down, I'm still, I'm still half a millimetre up on this dimension but now I can hold it in some V-block or in a V-block in the vise to do the flats on the other end Ok so this is the setup we've got here to do the flats on the end of the taper just in the um, T-slots of the table a couple of clamps, a bit of brass shim underneath this is the easiest way to set up, set of V-blocks and crap in the vise so. um, Coming in 20mm from the end with a 5.8 cutter. Um, I've converted back to Imperial for the depth, which is 185 thou, which I've got all the DRO set. I touched off on the end, touched off on the side. You won't be able to see much on this side, but you'll be able to see plenty on this side when I do this one. Do this other side. Try the drop test. So, just drop it from out here. There's a bit of brass going there. Do it again. Definitely, definitely getting a good hold. I'm pretty happy with that. I just rounded them corners off a touch more, make it look a bit prettier. But yeah. Should definitely hold them. Right here, we're back up in the lathe. Um, there was a fair bit of excess. I just spun that off while the camera was recharging, and. Um, 
got to be a 10 mil gland where the seal sits up here, 10 mil wide, at 36 mil, which it is right now. It's down to 36. This here has to, this here portion, you see it on the map here, let's go down to 25 mil, um, plus 0.01, minus nothing. So it's going to be pretty darn spot on. So I've got roughly about 10 mil to come off this, 5 mil aside. Then we've got to put a drilled and tapped hole up the end here. So, time to move on. I've got it down to I'm ready for my final pass now the final pass is going to be 14 and a half thou depth of cut but I'll double check that before I do it um, that'll bring me down to the 25 millimeters I've got about half a millimeter to take off this face here but I want to put a slight undercut in this corner here as well so when the bearing goes on there's no interference in the corner, even though this has got a decent radius. So, time to get some big boy balls and do it. Is that close to wanting to go? Shit. I'm going to have to hit that with the emery. Bugger it all. Something I didn't want to do. Well, that only took about a minute to get that spot on. That's a, that's a good fit. Okay, I have to just share for this corner here. Share for this one, and I've got to drill and tap for a bolt in this end. Okay, we're going to put a 3 8 16 thread in here to retain the end cap going about an inch deep. Threads are in, 
They turned out well. Okay, we're just about ready to put this thing together. Off camera, I've machined up a spacer to go between the two, the two bearings, and also machined up the end cap, which is 36 mil diameter, which is what the seal runs on, with a nine and a half mil hole. Made it out a bit of 4140, which was handy. So what I need to do now is assemble this. Um, and check the backlash my god that's a good fit and check the backlash I've got on the hub which I'll do in the vise so that's what we're up to next and all the parts have been made now I didn't bother showing the, these two pieces we've all seen doing plain turning before Anyway, we'll go over to the vise and um, put it together, check the backlash, then I can adjust this. So I reckon I've got it pretty close. If, I, if, it's, if it's real close, then I got real lucky. Right -o. So I've got a half hour indicator. Who wants to put a wager on it? How close is it? Five there. It's not bad for a guess. More ass and class, but you know, that's um, that's emery paper. Yep. Just do it with emery. It's not worth trying to chuck it back up, get it running dead true, and then, yeah. I'm trying to show five there off, I'll probably get, it's only aluminium, so. I'm going to leave it at that, because by the time I pack them with grease, I can be bloody near right. Thank God for gloves, eh? Man, oh man, it is cold this morning, I can tell you.
freezing. Brace has definitely stiffened it up a bit. It's a top seal in. Just gotta put the bottom one in now. That's it. I mean I see he's over the lathe. Cast a bit of a shadow on it, stop the light blowing it out. But I'm pretty disappointed in a way because that's it's got a thou run out. But where it is, I don't know. I thought I had everything as best I could get it, but obviously I'd screwed up somewhere. Anyway, I'll bring you over to the next indicator and show you what it's doing on the side here. It's running dead true there. I just got a thou run out on the face, so. I'm stuffed if I know where I've gone wrong. I don't believe a thou's going to bother. That's right on the out on the outside of it, where it'd probably be at its worst. But I just don't understand. Well, I've screwed up somewhere. I understand that, but I don't know where, because I spent a fair bit of time setting everything up and trying to get it as best as I possibly could. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to bolt the chuck up and see how it goes. I've got you guys in a place I've never put the camera up on the headstock, so we'll see how this goes. Just got to be very careful with clearance on these jaws on the carriage here. That's very good. Gonna be happy with that. Right, we'll sink it in and see what it does. I've changed to a WNMG insert. I'm gonna break a chip. I've got no idea what this material is, so 
give her a bit more feed. Should be right. Might have been a bit savage that last bit, but no rigidity, uh, no, no chatter, so plenty of rigidity there. I'd nearly class that as a success, to be honest. I'm pretty darn happy. Well, overall, I am absolutely over the moon with how this turned out in the end. Um, how it performed on the load was really good. That one thou of um, wobble you'd call it, it doesn't seem to affect anything. It ran true in the lathe, um, decent sized cuts, and it was no dramas, it was rigid. So, um, admittedly, this chuck is probably too large, really. So, but anyway, it is what it is. It's the only one I had laying around that was decent. I wasn't going to go out and buy a new one. A uh, big thanks to Max for the, um, for the help and advice he gave over the phone too. A um, couple of times I, I messaged him and just asked him a couple of tips and yeah, he was more than happy to answer it and the, the plans were bloody brilliant. So this is not a tool I'm going to use often, but when I need it, it's going to be good to have it. So the other one I made, um, he made Trevor once that, so he reckons he's going to have a fiddle around with it, so yeah, he can have it. Anyway, I hope he's enjoyed this build. This was a massive learning curve for me. I've never worked to that sort of precision before, um, clocking stuff up when you've got to turn it and get everything sort of running, you know, concentric, parallelism, all that stuff. It, I learned a lot. That was really, really good, and is probably what I needed too. So, um, I'd highly encourage you to go and watch Max's series on this. I think there's eight videos on it where he goes into heaps and heaps of detail, and there's a lot you can take away from the video too, or from Max's videos. The way he explains things is, I'm well, buggered if I can do it, but. The way he explains it, you can understand it. Um, yeah, this, I've only just skimmed over this build, really. Um, like, it took me, I think it took me um, four days in total, I think. I spent on this for four days to build it. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, I hope he's enjoyed that, and yeah. I don't know what the next build is now. I really don't know. I've got to get stuck into them old engines. I know that. Um, Trevor's been on in my ass about that. Got to get them going. So, anyway, we'll see what see what pops up next. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next video. Hey, right.